everybody, welcome to the show. I am your host, your expert life strategist. I am your business consultant. I am Karina Calhoun, and I'm super excited to be on the show with you today to bring you yet again another amazing episode that is, I'm sure it's going to empower you, it's going to educate you, it's going to inspire you to go be great. So today we have the lovely Dagmar Bryant on the show. Dagmar, how are you doing today? I'm amazing and loving being here. Thank you so much, Karina, for having me to share some tips with your audience. Absolutely. I am super thrilled to be chatting with you, Dagmar. Dagmar, tell us where in the world you are. Well, this is an Australian accent, but I am living in Lincoln, which is sort of halfway up the country in England. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, I talk to folks all over the world and I just, I have got to start traveling to some of these places because, you know, I'm just going to say this, I'm a foodie. So just tell us what is, what is your favorite dish where you are? I don't think it matters where I am. I always love Italian food. You cannot, I just cannot go wrong with Italian food, whether it's a lasagna or a garlic bread or even pizza. Give me that good Italian with loads of cheese. You know, it's funny you say that because on the menu for dinner for my husband and I today is guess what? Lasagna, because I have not made it in ages, ages. And so I said, you know what, Karina, (laughs) you're going to make some lasagna today. I kid you not. That is on the menu today. How amazing. Dagmar, tell us, please, how are you loving on the world around you? I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way things are. I mean, I'm, you know, it's, a, it's a beautiful, what can I say? It's a beautiful day. I'm alive. I'm helping other people. Can't ask for much more than that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how are you helping other people? Well, I'm a life empowerment coach and essentially I help women in their forties and fifties to live life on their terms, turning the meh into magnificent. I love that. And, you know, as someone who's in her 50s, I won't give specific numbers, but as someone who's in her 50s, I can say once you get to the 40s and 50s, honey, it is imperative that you live according to your own terms. I told my husband one day, I said, you know, this 50 something, I'm loving it. You know, I should have thought I should have kind of known about this back in my 20s and 30s because baby, I don't care. I am willing to live according to my own terms. So I absolutely love that you are helping women to do that and really helping them dial into that because, you know, I tell folks that Go Be Great really is, it's a culmination of, hey, listen, you have permission. Stop waiting on it. And so I feel like, Dagmar, that's really, in essence, what you're telling women in their 40s and 50s. You have permission to live according to your own values. Tell us about that. Well, exactly. And I couldn't have put it better myself. But the problem that I see with many clients who come to me is that they're in this space where they're putting everybody else's needs before their own. And, you know, the kids, the kids might be at the stage of leaving home or they might have left home and they're feeling in this in-between stage. And they're kind of like, I don't know what I want anymore because it's just been so many years since they've said, hey, how about me? I'm going to put my hand up. Let's let's spend some time on me, what's important to me. And they've forgotten how to do that. And, you know, and I think that's really vital uh, because we, in our 40s and 50s, like you said, we are watching the children leave the home. We yeah. just had the last one. She's off to college uh, shortly um, this year. And I'm so thankful that I have already leaned into who I am and started doing this really a long time ago. But for those that have not done this, I want to encourage you to really, (laughs) Dagmar is one of those people who is going to be your sister, your auntie, your bestie. 
um, the mother figure, you're, I feel like you're going to be all of that encompassed into one person. So tell us how, when someone gets in touch with you, how they are able to really lean into who they need to be. Because taking off that superwoman cape and just being themselves, I'm sure it can be a little daunting. Very much so. And I think the first step in the process is going back to the core Mm. of who you are and what matters to you. And sometimes people actually say to me, I don't actually know what that is. So we go through it. I have a system. It's called the Breakthrough Break Free Roadmap. And I take them on this journey to discover who am I and, and, and what even matters to me? So we do look at things like, you know, values and purpose and, and what now? And looking at those deeper questions and also then we the, the, the second part of that process is looking at the belief systems that we so often instill in ourselves and sometimes we don't even do that consciously because we start we, we start saying to ourselves, oh, I'm not good enough or I can't do that or I'm too old for all of that. You know, it's, it's that internal dialogue that, that goes on and it's about shifting some of that to come back to that confident person that I know that you really want to be. I love that. And I, I want to share just a transparent moment with you, Dagmar, and those that are listening. Uh, I'm pretty good on self-esteem. I'm pretty mm-hmm. good on it. I'm pretty confident. Um, but there's always work that can be done. And I say that because recently I had the epiphany um, that, so let me just back up. I'll just give you all of the information. On listennotes.com, they have me listed as top 10 global podcast. And so I'm super excited about that. Also, they have it listed that I have either guested or uh, hosted over 300, almost 330, a little over 330 podcast episodes. And so with that being said, you know, I have, I had, had been hesitant about saying I'm an expert. And so I was talking to my business bestie. And I said, it's not that I thought less of myself. I didn't think enough of myself to say that I'm an expert. So I wanted to go through all of that just to give you a real life example of some of the things that I know, Dagmar, you are helping women with because sometimes it's not even about, hey, I have low self-esteem. Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this about myself. Sometimes it's just us not thinking enough of ourselves. What do you have to say about that? Because I really believe that that needs to happen more. It's not a prideful thing. It's a really setting yourself in the space that you belong. Yeah, very much so. And the thing is, we go through phases. Mm -hmm. There are times you you said that you know about your own example with with the podcast you know it wasn't pride or anything like that and it's like there would have been a part of you that said hey actually this is really good you know and then there's that part of you after that that would have gone hold on a minute am I really good enough do I really deserve this and it's the little voice in the background that 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 starts to doubt us it's that little monkey on our on our back and it's and it's actually normal but that's where you know you said you have a bestie and you're you know whether we have besties whether we have coaches whether we have mentors it's that person who helps us to say hold on let's take a look at this from a different perspective Mm -hmm. look at all the things that you have done and I love I love the name of your podcast it's that go be great and I want to remind you of all those wonderful things that you're do that you've that you're doing or that you've done, but all of a sudden that little voice is saying, "Oh no, we'll just push that aside. We'll just put that to the bottom somewhere." And that's not the way it should be. We it's not ego to actually say, "Hey, I've done a lot. I've got a lot to offer." 
and sometimes we just need to be reminded of that so Karina you've got a lot to offer and well done you thank you so very much and I think that's vital Dagmar and correct me if I'm wrong doing a a self-evaluation and then listing out your accomplishments can actually help you to really bolster your confidence and see what you've done, where you've been and what, what impact you've made. Because sometimes when we're so focused on pushing forward or focused on other things as women in their 40s and 50s have done with everyone else in their life, they don't realize the good that is stacked up in their favor, the things that they have done that is absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing, things that has their name tagged by it, because let's face it, they have done some amazingness. And some, you know, let's just be honest, I have kids, so we're just going to say it, amazingness outside of inside of our home. Yes. And the thing is, no matter how much we do, it's almost ingrained in our psyche to want something more. And we forget that journey of all the things that we've overcome. Because if you think about it, your life, my life, all of your audiences, all of our lives have been filled with challenges. And to get to the other side of those challenges and, to, and to, to look at that and to be able to say, darn, I just did something great. I got through that. And what did I learn? And we, we don't actually do that self-evaluation. Most of the time we, we undervalue mm. the successes that we've had. And then I, I always tell my clients, go ask, well, go ask one of your friends or go, go ask a colleague or someone that you know what do they think about you and, and, and your achievements and, and get them to tell you some of the things that they think are great about you just to hear what they say about you. And so different from what goes on in our head to what the outside perception of you is. But it's a great reminder of how fabulous they think that you are. And sometimes people are actually in awe of mm. us and how much we've done. And, and sometimes the, that conversation in our brain goes, oh, yeah, well, it was nothing. But it wasn't just nothing. It was just this, this wonderful thing that, you know, we have had an impact in some way. But we forget. We suppress it. We, we, we you know, we bring it down. I had someone recently tell me, uh, and, I, and you're just bringing all of this to the forefront, uh, they said, Karina, I am riding on the waves of your focus. And yeah. I thought, I mean, it literally just like tears just was welling up in my eyes because I'm thinking I'm simply doing and being who I'm supposed to do and be. And so when you think about women who are in their 40s and 50s, who don't think that they're doing anything spectacular, but are doing amazing and wonderful things, but they just don't see it because those blinders are up. I am super excited that you are loving on the world the way that you are. Tell us, so if someone wanted to get in touch with you, someone that's listening, woman in, in her 40s and 50s, she you know, could have an amazing career working a nine to five. She could be a business owner. Uh, she could have a side hustle. She could be a stay-at-home mom who is empty nesting. Mm -hmm. But it's woman who really needs to see her self-worth and the value that she is independent of her inside the home work. Uh, what does she need to do to get in touch with you? What is your, do you have a website and does she do a, a, a application, a survey, intake form? What happens? Well, I've kept it actually really, really simple. So you can just contact me via my website. It's dagmarbryant.com. 
and just contact me via the contact form. I'm on LinkedIn. That's my preferred platform. You can message me, send me a DM. There's no complicated forms. It's all about having a conversation and mm. seeing where you're at and where you want to be and how I can assist you in that process. That's really straightforward. I, I believe in the KISS process. Keep it simple. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Now, Dagmar, I don't want you to give the farm away, but tell us one really good step that a woman can take to um, really lean into who she is in her 40s and 50s. I'm going to give you, I, I thought about this and there's a, there's a number of tips that I could give you, but you, you asked for one. So let's go for boundaries. And I believe that really leaning into who you are and who you want to be, more importantly, is about also setting up some boundaries. And that if that means that every now and then, or should I say more often, you say the word no, that is actually perfectly acceptable. Instead of everybody leaning on you saying, can you do this for me? Can I get a lift from you here? Can you help me with whatever it is? You actually can say, actually, I can't do that for you. No. And you can say it in the nicest possible way, whatever is right for you. But setting up that boundary of not being available for everybody all of the first time for, for all of, sorry, not being available for everybody all of the time is a valuable first step in making time for you. And I, I guess that, that, that is one of the crucial things. If you think about your calendar, you put time in for, you know, meetings, you put time in for um, appointments, you put time in for all sorts of things but I'm going to encourage you to put time into your calendar that is just for you. And don't even give an explanation. If somebody, if somebody asks you to do something, you say, I'm sorry, I have, I have an appointment. You don't have to tell them that, that that is an appointment for yourself. I believe that that boundary for self-care and for yourself has to come first. I absolutely love all of that. I, I mean, the fact that, you're saying no. And then the fact that you're putting in your calendar specific time for yourself. I want to ask you one last thing regarding that. Why is it so important? Actually, there's going to be two things. Why is it so important to set boundaries? And then also, why is it so important to say no? Because unfortunately, those people who are closest to us, whether they're family, friends, colleagues, they get used to us saying yes. Can you do that extra job for me? Can you run that errand for me? So if you're always saying yes, that means there's less time for you. And by setting boundaries, it means people around you, one, have to acknowledge that boundary because you're saying hold on a sec stop for a moment there's there's this boundary I'm putting time in for myself but also it means that to some degree they have to then take responsibility for themselves every time they're asking you to do something for them it means they've got a scapegoat if you like I know that sounds a bit harsh but it's like they've got a scapegoat for someone else doing it for them whereas when you go hold a minute no stop we're not doing that. It means they have to find a solution. And unfortunately, if people don't get made to find their own solutions, they never learn the solution. Does that make sense? It does. It does. I love that. I love that. And then when, <clears throat> excuse me, when you, when you make those boundaries, when you put those boundaries in place and you say no, you are saying, in essence, that you are a priority. Yes. It is so important that you make yourself a priority. 
hear us and hear us well, all that are listening. It is not selfish to make you a priority. Yeah. It is not selfish to make you number one, because the fact of the matter is, and everyone has heard this analogy, you have to put the oxygen mask on first. Okay. So if you don't put that oxygen mask on first, and you're constantly going, you're not taking care of you, you're not prioritizing your mental wellness, your physical wellness, your emotional wellness, then guess what happens? There's no more you. And I told a young lady this recently. I said, look at the people around you because she was telling me that this person needed that and that person needed this, and this person needed that. And I said, take a look at the people around you. Are you their friend or are, or are they your friend? Because if they're not pouring into you the things that you need, they're not your friend. They are simply taking from you. Yeah. You're their friend. You're giving them what they need. You're their friend, but they're not your friend. Huge difference. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that you unfriend your family. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. <laughs> But what I am saying is evaluate those around you and see who's giving, see who's taking. Sometimes those that are taking may need to take for a, or a brief period of time. But what are you giving out? So I know this was a heavy conversation today, but I feel like it's needed. I feel like it's needed as we go into new seasons into new times, into new eras. And so I want you all to really self-evaluate. If you're in your 40s and 50s and you know you need that person beside you, walking with you, helping to guide you through, really leaning into you, please reach out to Dagmar. Dagmar, tell us one more time your website. It's dagmarbryant.com. I love it. Thank Folks, you. this has been another amazing episode of Go Be Great with Coach Karina. And I will see you all on the flip side. Bye for now.